So every time you face rogues, you simply lost and you couldn't do anything about it. But when you try to play rogue, you don't understand why it just doesn't work or you just can't hit. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five variations of rogues that you need to know because all of them are very situational and you need to understand in which situation you are so you can play the best variation for you. And also I'm going to share with you a backup plan, what you can play in case you are contested on rogues. And also at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a little positioning trick you can try to apply if you want to avoid having your main carrier being one shot by rogues at the beginning of the fight. This is very important because this will help you win some fights in the mid game and late game that had help you save a lot of HP and maybe finish second or first. So let's get to it. For those who don't know me, I'm Frobe. I've been challenger multiple times. I finished top 62 at set 9 and I'm making guides with Tactor, which is a sponsor of my channel where I write guides like this with a lot of content and details. So you can get it to this guide for free. You have the link in the description. And now let's get into the guide. So if you want to play Rogue, um, let's say you need to first to know the basic version of Rogue, which is more or less this. You don't have an emblem. You don't have a plus one that allows you to have more Slayers, more Rogues. And you basically play without Ishtal as well because the bonus from Ishtal isn't that great. In that case, what you want to do, and I'm explaining in the game plan in the guide, but here I'm explaining here, you want to open fort at the beginning of the game, meaning that you don't invest gold in the early game to push to get your levels, you don't roll, you just try to get to 50 gold as fast as possible. And then after at stage 3-2, you will push level 6 and you will roll for Kiana. I'm going to show the comp that you want to have when you roll. But anyway, this is the late game comp. Once you have Kiana 3 at level 6, because you're going to slow roll for this, you're going to push level 7 and then you're going to find Katarina 3, or it can also be Echo 3, depending on what you hit first. I prefer Katarina over Echo, but if your game gives you many Echo and you just can't find any Katarina, it's much better to play with Echo instead of Katarina. But now let's talk about how you can improve this board to have better chances at winning. So the first improvement you can get, and actually I think this is one of the best, is when you get a rogue emblem. So obviously you try to get the rogue emblem at the beginning of the game. In that case, you're thinking that, oh, I should play Kiana reroll. In that case, you will put uh, the rogue emblem on Mordekaiser. You will still play the same way with Kata uh, Kiana 3 at level 6. And then at level 7 here, you have two choices. Either you find Mordekaiser 2 quite easily. In that case, you put uh, items on him first and you put whatever leftover items on Katarina, or you find Katarina 3 kinda easily, and you, obviously you put the items on Katarina, and then after, very in a very, very late game, you put whatever items you have on Mordekaiser. So here, these are not the best items for Mordekaiser, but I wanted to show that here in this moment, you basically put whatever you find on the late game carousel and late game PvE rounds. Another variation I really like to have, but it's a little bit trickier, is when you have a Slayer Emblem. So when you have a Slayer Emblem, you need to push that Slayer vertical as much as possible. And Katarina will be an excellent Slayer user. Um, in that case, you can play the same way. The only thing I don't really like in this comp is that you need to be level 8 to reach the full potential of this comp. But unfortunately, you spend a lot of time at level 6. You also spend a lot of time at level 7 to reroll for Katarina uh, here and Kiana. So it's a little bit tricky during the moment when you are trying to get these 3 stars and you have to play with 5 Slayers and only after you play with 6 Slayers. Um, but obviously, if you have two emblems and the best is one Slayer, one Rogue, you literally don't have this weakness and you can have the six layers, four Rogues at level seven. And if that's the case, in, I, I can say like, as long as you find your three star units and you don't have bad items, you, you pretty much guaranteed to win your game. You can definitely beat people who have three star focus units like Sejuani, for instance, or Shen, they, they are nothing to you. You just jump in the back line anyway. And what happens in case that you just are unable to find Kiana because you are contested or just because she doesn't appear in your shops? That happens. And in that case, you have a backup plan. Let's say you don't have any emblem. Um, in that case, you just play around Echo and Jace. So Jace can be also 
jinx actually i'm just saying this both are extremely good reward uh, units but obviously this comp is not as good as the comps i showed above it's just like it's a nice backup plan to have so you don't have a straight eighth or straight seventh but instead you can save a top four thanks to this one of the great thing about this comp is like the items are kind of similar at least for echo and for jace you would prefer to have a crit build but you know uh, since you it's difficult to have six gloves in one game uh, just go with more attack speed more ad and this is nice enough for jace to be shining okay so like i said earlier i'm going to explain a little bit about how you should stabilize your board at level six so like i said earlier every time you want to play this comp or at least most of the time you want to make sure that you lose the early game on purpose so you can stack up your gold as fast as possible but at the same time, you need to make sure that you win your fights during stage three, because if you lose the whole stage two and you're still losing stage three, you will most likely finish eighth, no matter what comp you play. So during stage three, a stage three two, more precisely, you need to push level six and roll until you find this comp. You need to have Kiana two, you need to have Graves two, and then after you need to find the other two rogues if you have two stars it's even better but let's say like realistically speaking and statistically speaking it won't happen most of the time then after you what you want to add is a couple more nice synergies and then from that point you should be able to win fights you need to make sure however to position yourself properly every round kiana needs to be in front of the opponent's carry because she's the solo carry for now after winning your fights during stage three you will build back your icon to 50 gold and you will slow roll every turn until you find kiana 3 once you find kiana 3 you will push level 7 and you will try to reroll for Katarina. So let's talk about these augments a little bit more. I want to spend more time on the S tier augments. So in the silver, the healing orbs is insane. It helps your uh, rogues to stay alive longer, and that's what you want. Jewel Lotus one is extremely powerful because you can have this on Kiana, and if you don't have IE on her, then she will still be able to crit with high chance of crit, so that's why I love it. Uh, idealism um, is just perfect for Katarina and Kiana. Long distance pause obviously between these two. Uh, Vampiric Blaze because not only it gives you more rogues so it's easier to find your rogues but also it provides them with sustain so in that case you can remove for instance BT on Kiana and you can have something more defensive for instance. Um, one thing I really love about this comp is Gifts from the Fallen because since your rogues will drop the aggro you will realize that most of the time your rogues will be the last one standing in the fight and if they are the last one standing in the fight with give from the fallen they will receive tons of stats and they'll be like almost unkillable uh, another thing i want to add is like infernal contract could be actually the best prismatic augment for this comp if you are struggling to find your three star units because honestly this comp doesn't require you to be level eight or level nine in fact you're much happier if you find kata three echo three Kiana 3, Mordecai's are 2, and you can stuff them properly, and that's it. You, you don't even need to push level 8 most of the time. And here I also made a little legend tier list. So for me, the best legend is Earth. It allows you to have plus 1 uh, rogue or plus 1 slayer quite easily. Um, but if you don't like Earth, because uh, if you don't have these emblems, you have to play with something else, so it means you need to know how to play flexible. You can play with Vegar. I think Vegar, uh, the first augment is insanely good. The second augment that gives AD, attack speed, AP is really nice. So if you don't have good choices, you can pick that. However, don't pick Ascension because the fights are too explosive right now because of Bridgewater and Rogues. So most fights don't last 15 seconds and don't pick Ascension. Great, let's talk about the positioning trick you can apply in order to avoid having Kiana or Katarina to just one shot your target whenever they dash. So one other thing about the rogue is like they will jump when they go below 50% health, you know this, and they will always target a unit that's four hexes away. And if they are not unit at four hexes away, they will target at three hexes. And if there's no one, they go at two hexes and so on. But they will always try to go to the target at four hexes away and preferably into the back lane. But there's a little thing that I learned recently is that apparently they like to dash in diagonal on their left. So on the left of Kiana is on our right. So for instance, Kiana, uh, if she was in the middle and there are one, two, three, four, one target here, one, two, three, four, one target here, she has more chance to target Gangplank 
rather than targeting Azir. So that's that's kind of weird, but that's more or less what happens. Obviously, if you have Gangplank here, the only target at 4 hex is uh, straight is Azir, so she will go on Azir. And if Azir, I don't know, is here, she will go on Silco because one, two, three, four. But since it's not a straight line, it's a little bit weird for rogues. I don't know why. Um, that's how it's coded. It's not my fault, but this is just observation. So um, this is why you want to make sure that you always have a bait which is at four hexes away of Kiana. For instance, um, I can place Azir whenever I want. If no one else is at four hexes, she will go on Azir. And obviously she won't go on Nautilus because Rogue will preferably jump into the back lane, right? That's written here. So that's why she will never go on Nautilus unless there's no unit here. So one thing you can do is like, since most people uh, put their Rogues on the side and they are right to do so, um, there is one thing you can do is to put Azir here and add a bait at four hexes from Kiana. So one, two, three, four, a gangplank here. That way, if she jumps, she will jump on gangplank and she will not jump on Azir. It doesn't mean that she won't go on gangplank, one shot as uh, gangplank and then go on Azir. It's possible. It will happen most of the time. But at least it buys a couple more seconds for your Azir to survive longer and deal damage and maybe even killing Kiana, we never know. Because another thing you could do, but doesn't really work with Kiana, it worked kinda well uh, in set nine because we have Viego, for instance, who's a single target user. Um, you could put Gangplank here, so she will target Gangplank, but the problem is like she deals an AOE, so she will touch those two and one shot those two. So it's really important that you have a ranged unit. The best, obviously the best, but won't happen most of the time, um, is like you have Emmerdinger with triple upgrades, uh, which are repair, beam, 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 and you leave it there. So Kiana attacks the turret, the turret dies, then after she goes on Emmer, Emmer dies, but the uh, turret goes back, so she targets the turret again. You, you can earn like an extra five to six seconds, uh, depending on if Emmer is one star or two. Uh, if it's a two star, you can earn like 10 seconds. I truly hope that the rogues will be nerfed quite soon because this is kind of oppressing. It makes the fight too explosive and we have beach water as well that's too explosive. So it's really hard to play comps that need time to shine, just like Invoker, for instance. Invoker has literally no chance to win against rogues and beach water. The fights are just too explosive. Everything I show here I already shared to the people who have access to my private Discord. This private Discord is available to you if you subscribe to the YouTube membership. And in this private Discord, I share all the secret tips, all the comps, everything I know, everything that can help you climb faster on TFT, and I share them before making videos. So that way you have an edge over anyone watching this video and be able to abuse the comps before others. It also helps me to fund my trip to Las Vegas because I'm going to TFT tourney at Las Vegas and it's quite expensive because I'm living in France. In the meantime, if you want to enjoy free content, you can still subscribe to my weekly analysis I put on my newsletter. I share it every week and you can just find the best comps you have to play each week so you can focus on the games where I do all the research, analysis and observations. Until next video, happy climbing and see you at the top of the ladder.